I want to ask you guys a few questions. Who here likes to travel? Just raise your hand, it's all fine. Who likes to travel? Don't be shy, come on. Just a few people? Okay, that's good. Who here hates to travel? I hate to travel. I'm gonna tell you why. Don't get me wrong, I really, really enjoy being in all sorts of cool places like Barcelona or Prague or Moscow, but I hate the process. It's horrible. And you've probably been in all those situations when the hotel says, hey, we don't have room for you, or the airline breaks your nose. You know, hopefully you haven't been in that situation, though. So, but let me talk a little bit about travel, uh, its problems, and how Winding Tree wants to solve those problems with um, the decentralized architecture that blockchains provide to us. Uh, so the name of the project is, of course, Winding Tree, and it's a B2B decentralized marketplace for travel. But let's start from the very beginning. What is the problem here? And the problem, of course, is that not a lot of people know that, but the problem is that the travel industry is dominated almost fully by just a handful of large corporations. Uh, here's some numbers. So 92% of uh, all non-direct hotel reservations in the United States go through either Expedia or Priceline, just two companies. So if you don't book directly with the hotel and you think you're using Kayak or Orbitz or some other company, no. Actually, all those brands belong to either Expedia or Priceline. Here's another piece of information. So uh, there are three GDSs, we call them, global distribution systems out there that completely dominate the airline industry. There is, if, you're, if you have an airline, you have no other choice. You either sell direct or you go through one of those three companies. And of course, the situation uh, brings up a lot of interesting problems. So one is high transaction fees. Of course, if you have two companies on the market and everyone has to work with them, of course, they will be charging crazy transaction fees, like in the hotel industry, for example, up to 25%. So another problem is that there is no innovation. So imagine uh, you see it, and there's a, there are a lot of many people from Russia here. So an example from Russia is you have a lot of oil. You see it on a gold mine. Why do you need to innovate? The answer is you don't have to innovate. You have a source of uh, really, really good income, right? So there's no innovation. Those companies, they don't care about startups. You go to them, and I've been in that situation myself. You go to them and they say, and you say, I want to combine your hotel inventory, your airline inventory, and whatever you have in an interesting way. And they say, oh, you have zero volume today? That's pretty cute. We don't care about you. Get out of here, right? There's no innovation in the travel industry because of this oligopolistic nature of, of the travel industry. And there's a whole number of other problems. We gave those companies that sit in the middle of all those transactions so much power that they abuse it. And, and these are just a few examples. I, on my LinkedIn profile, I actually wrote a big blog post about um, what happens in the travel industry. And the examples are plentiful, right? So an airline says to one of those GDSs, hey guys, we don't like the contract too much. Can we talk about it? And, and that company says, well, you kind of have to deal with it. You know, you have no choice. We can either turn you off or you sign a contract, right? The, power, the abuse of power is one of the biggest problems, of course, not just in the travel industry, and, but in all sorts of um, other industries as well. So the biggest problem in the travel industry, that those, the fundamental problem that those companies bring to the table is that the data is not open. Those companies are bottlenecks, and everyone has to go to them and ask for that data. And of course, without open data, we cannot have any innovation. We cannot have permissionless innovation. We cannot iterate fast enough. And therefore, many executives out there, travel executives, say that travel is 10 years behind, at least 10 years behind. And again, those who, don't, who are not familiar with the travel industry, some of those travel companies still use fax machines and XML APIs and mainframes and systems written in COBOL in the 70s. That's how crazy it is. And of course, the same person, Naval, says that blockchains will replace networks with markets. 
it doesn't make any sense for the blockchain not to replace all those different marketplaces. And that's exactly what we're doing with the Winding Tree project. That's exactly what the change that we want to see. So here's the, the representation, very, very simplified, of the travel ecosystem that exists today. On the right, you have all the suppliers. It's airlines, hotels, rail, vacation rentals, whatever have you, right? And then in the middle, there is a number of uh, providers that take the commission fee but don't add a lot of value. And actually, they lock you down with their all outdated technology. And again, the, the stuff I'm talking about, I'm just scratching the surface of this black hole because uh, another example, in the United States, there's only one company, one that reconciles all the airline transactions. You have no choice. If you're an airline, you have to work with one company. Of course they can do, they can charge you whatever they want, right? And I've been working on this graph uh, for a long, long time. Unfortunately, the animation, because it's a PowerPoint, is not too fast. But uh, for about a few months, I worked on this graph, and it looks like this. That's the situation that we have in all sorts of markets where there is only two or three companies that sit in the middle of all those transactions. And of course, blockchain allows us to do this. So let me talk about what Winding Tree is doing in order to fulfill this version of the future. Our version of the travel ecosystem looks like this. Winding Tree creates a protocol, a set of smart contracts based on the standards that we developed with our partners, with our airline partners and the hotel partners as well. Um, and again, we're not just limited to hotels or airlines. It's about rail, it's about all modes of transportation, it's about all modes of uh, accommodation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it looks like there's something, there's a blob in the middle. But of course, we all know what decentralized network really means. So there is no bottleneck. There is no third trusted party that can be hacked or they can abuse their power, right? So that's what Winding Tree is creating. And we're doing that through our foundation uh, in Switzerland. It's a nonprofit, of course, company that is with, whose sole purpose is to foster innovation in the travel industry. There's nothing else there. Uh, it's a nonprofit company, and we are issuing our token on November 1st in order to fund the development of this protocol. And of course, our model is similar to um, Ethereum, for example, which was also created uh, or the, their token sale was also fulfilled by a nonprofit organization out of Switzerland. And this nonprofit, first of all, will create these standards, this, this decentralized B2B marketplace for travel that would connect suppliers, that is airlines and hotels, et cetera, and sellers of travel, that is travel agencies, um, because we have to open up the data. Without open data, we cannot have innovation. But after that, the foundation will, will fund all so, sorts of different projects that will add to the value of the marketplace, that will make the marketplace more successful. And it's going to be all sorts of open source projects. And an example of that, can you imagine that out there today, out there, there, there are no databases of all the destinations in the world uh, that you can go and take and use in your project. None. Zero. We will find a project like that and make the development of all sorts of travel-related services much, much easier for everyone. And of course, it's all sorts of events. Another mind-blowing fact is that uh, there were no events, and still up until now, there are no events for software engineers in travel and for startups in the travel space. Before I started a company uh, uh, a conference called Travel Tech Con in San Francisco, and we've been, we've been running that conference for two consecutive years, and there are no other events like that in the world. This is how outdated the travel industry is. Our token is called Lyft. Lyft is used for payments on the platform, but not only because of payments. By making participants of the platform use Lyft for payments, we're proving that those participants have skin in the game, that they should be able to participate in the governance of the platform. And that's the second feature of the Lyft token. Because, of course, you have to maintain and upgrade and update smart contracts in a completely decentralized way. Each and every decentralized project has to have a governance platform. And Lyft is the governance token uh, uh, of that platform as well. 
So here's some of the features that travel industry is experiencing or some of the problems and some of the features of the, our platform that we want to tackle. Of course, it's reduced transaction cost. Blockchain fundamentally reduces transaction costs and the cost of audit. It's fraud, and I'm not going to go into technical details about how it's going to work, but fraud will be tackled uh, by using our cryptocurrency. It's identity and, and reputation, and it's a big problem, uh, and it's a big issue for all sorts of projects, settlement, loyalty, process automation, etc. We, our team, has experience in, in the travel industry. We have decades of experience. Uh, our advisors and the president of the foundation has 30 years uh, experience in the travel industry. Our advisors are coming from all sorts of travel companies, including uh, Cathay Pacific, including Viama. Myself, personally, I went through Y Combinator. My other co-founder went through Y Combinator. We have advisors from Air Canada, Zeppelin, uh, British Airways, uh, some of the people invested. And next week, wait for a big, big announcement. Um, so our project is called Winding Tree. We're decentralizing the seven trillion dollar travel industry and we want to make travel cheaper for you, more profitable for travel companies, just more enjoyable. We want to enable more innovation in the travel industry so you can have better services, more personalization, uh, better apps, better websites, etc. And if you want to learn more, join our Telegram or Rocket Chat, just don't go to Slack uh, because Slack sucks because it's spam. Thank you very much.